radiofreebrooklyn.org. Yeah, you're not going to hear this on mainstream media either. Yeah. Sir. Bunch of. Oh, yeah. Bunch of chaps in the studios keeping it real. Realist. This is real. This is real. Real show. As opposed to virtual. Virtual. Yeah, this ain't no virtual show. This ain't no Zoom. This is stationary. <laughs> welcome to stationary. Hey, welcome to. Welcome to. Yeah, construction. Welcome to No Suggestion, everybody. I'm Ralph Jean Pierre. This is an improv comedy talk show. We got co host Jake Joseph here. Hello. Hello. Oh, yeah. It's a rainy Thursday night in Bushwick. Mm-hmm. Getting soggy, getting real. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna. This is a quiet storm. Uh, tonight's guest is uh, a, a man. I'm, I'm, I'm learning. Uh, I already knew, but a man of uh, many facets, many talents, many colors. Wearing a reading rainbow T-shirt. Ladies and gentlemen, we got Michael Serpy. Am I saying it right? You are, yeah. All right, Michael Serpy is in the house. Yeah. Yo. Shout out to LeVar Burton. Shout out to PBS. Shout out, shout mm-hmm. out, shout out. Shout out to DMX and his remix of Reading Rainbow. Wow. Uh, yeah, shout out to Yonkers 10701. Uh, <laughs> I used to live there. Wow, nice. you used to live in Yonkers? I used to live in Yonkers. List the places again that you've lived, Michael. Uh, currently living in Rockland County, New York, uh, upstate. The, some people say upstate. I don't think so, but I'll, I'll let that slide. Upstate mm-hmm. of where I am currently am right now. Uh, lived in Yonkers, lived in uh, Stanford, Connecticut a little bit. Uh, Back in Rockland now. Yeah, a little bit closer. Than my, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could pull it towards you if okay, you want. Yeah, yeah, I got that freedom. Yeah, yeah, you got that freedom. Um, where are you from originally? Rockland County originally. So you're a New York boy. That's New York Long boy. Island. Uh, it's it's upstate. That's upstate. Across from Westchester. Okay, okay. The best of all Chester's. The best of all Chester's. Wow. Um, I really, I, I was like, I have something, but I don't even know. Maybe I do. Okay, so I didn't, I don't know. I didn't formally explain the format of the show. I purposely kept it secret, Ooh. clandestine. Um, but it's a very simple format. We're gonna, we're gonna hang out. We're gonna talk about anything you want to talk about, anything we want to talk about, anything that comes up. And then uh, at any point during this show, which is an hour long, we, any of us, can initiate an improv scene. Hopefully, maybe based off whatever we're talking about, and that improv scene could be thirty seconds long, could be three minutes long, could be however long it is. And at any point, any of us could call a scene. And uh, yeah, hopefully we get. Hopefully that happens four times around four times in this hour. We get we do four improv scenes in this hour. If we do more, yippee! Bonus points. Woo-hoo. Yeah, that's fantastic. If we do less, boo. boo. Stone him, kill him. Boo this man. Boo this man. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm yeah. gonna stick you, which is where I just throw sticks at you instead of stones. Wow. Ooh, wow. Yeah. Damn. That's. It's almost. It's like a, there's a ridicule to it. Yeah. They say sticks and stones can break your bones, but no one talks about getting sticked. No. Yeah. It's always stoned. Careful, careful sticking people though. You might get a splinter. Yeah. That's well. Live by the stick. Die by the stick. Bars. Uh, uh, gentlemen, let's let's keep it professional. That's true. Let's keep it. Let's keep it clean. Let's keep it professional. I don't want anyone getting a splinter. Look, I can't. I can't guarantee that none of us will get splinters. We can't guarantee it. In wood shop and carpentry, there's always a danger that one of us might get a splinter. Kevin, you're you're a fine carpenter. Andrew, you're just learning. Thank you. You're just learning. There's a there's a lot of big tools here that are intimidating to my young eyes. Take your time. You'll grow and learn as you can. Try and pick up that guillotine axe. Like the the the, the big one here, yeah, the one yeah, that's yeah. listening. Yeah, yeah. Try and pick it up. Shoot, Andrew, that is heavy. It's mm-hmm. heavy because it's a, a it's a a piece of machinery you should respect. Uh, it's a guillotine at, saw axe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The names change depending on the region, but what doesn't change is you can lose your hand. You could have told me that before I tried to pick it up. That's why I wanted you to pick it up. Oh, this is like that first day. It's like uh, when it's your first day working at the hardware shop. Like, oh, oh get me the plaid paint. Ha 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 ha. Pick up that hammer behind you, Andrew. I got it. 
Notice how he's holding it. It's like graceful yet stern. Because it has a bayonet that comes out the top. Goddamn. Be very careful in this shop. We do a high level of carpentry. At any point, am I going to sign a waiver? Uh, that's not the honor code that carpenters follow. Yeah. All right. Okay. The honor code is uh, live by the carpent, die by the carpent. That's beautiful. Thank you, Andrew. Kevin, yeah. pick up that sandpaper behind you. The the 80 grit, uh, the 90 grit. Which... Yep. Pick it up. Oh, oh. It's rough on the hands, right? It is right? rough on the hands. Rough on the hands. I got very unusually smooth hands for a, for a, for a man not to get all heteronormative. But like not a lot of manual labor, uh, so these hands are. That's why you're here. Okay. That's why you're here, and also you've got your fingerprints on that sandpaper. It's implicated you in a murder. Mm-hmm. Be careful with the tools in this shop. I I will respect the tool. I re- sandpaper. I respect you. I respect you, sandpaper. Please don't send me to jail. It's also a subpoena. You'll be expected to be in court next week. That, that's what that fine print on this thing is. Look, get your hands up. Go. We set this up. Because we know the sting operation. Yeah, we know that we've we've gotten so many criminals just because of the their interest in some casual carpentry. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna put the sandpaper down gently. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it down. You're coming you're, I'm on the work you to Put your hands behind your back, and you're coming with us. Look, we know you are the one that's been vandalizing all of the trash cans in the neighborhood, and we know you're the one who killed Mrs. Masterson's dog. Look, that dog was talking to me. Oh, my God. It was talking to me, and it asked for sweet release of death. You can't convince me otherwise. And as far as spray painting, I'm an artist at heart. I'm an artist at heart with the Krylon and the spray paint. That's my Look, thing. We'd, we're not here about the artistry. Your, your work is beautiful. Thank you. You know, actually, I think some people in the neighborhood like that you vandalize their garbage cans, but... It's the other stuff. The dog. The dog. Yeah, yeah. The other dog. Yeah. yeah. mentioned dogs. We're yeah. here. We're going to take you in or we can offer you a work release program and we can train you to build dog houses. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in. I, I, I'm very fragile for, for prison. I got too, my hands are too soft for prison. Yeah. I'll work, work release. Yeah. Absolutely. Good. Now touch everything in this <laughs> carpentry shop. I mean, okay. That way, if you use it in the course of further crimes, we'll have you. Hey, hold, hold on a second. I didn't see any badges. I'm just taking y'all your word that you're cops. Let me see your badges. I just have a I just have a permit to build cabinets. All right, scene. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, so Michael, I, I wanna first hear I feel like I wanna start here because you have a baby that you have built and been working on for nine years. Mm-hmm. I want to know about this show and where where it came from, how it came to pass. Um, you're, uh, I just want to give a little bit. You're an improviser. I've seen around the scene. I went. You said eight years, but I feel like I've seen you. I, I, I kind of like rounded up like pandemic math changes stuff, and also I took a break between like certain levels of improv class to go on various theatrical projects. So there'd be like a year gap between one improv class and the next when I would do you know a couple musicals here and there. But yeah, it, I started like 2013, so I guess like 10 years. But then it's like. The pandemic time warp. What does time mean anymore? Yeah, uh, so yeah. we got like ten years, give or take. Um, but for nine of those years, I have been uh, I'm a cast member and uh, now co-host of a wonderful improv show uh, called "You Are Not Alone," an uplifting show about depression. It is a mental health uh, themed improv show where storytellers come in and they share a story about a time in their life where they were going through it, and that inspires improv comedy from our amazing cast. Uh, some of my best friends in the entire world, including my best friend who actually created the show, uh, Mr. Aaron Gold. Uh, I joined the show like a couple months into their ru- now, as of uh, two weeks from now, hitting nine years. You know, nine years in improv team years. Yeah. That's like 30 years. We age like dogs. Mm. Um, that shows a third grader? Yeah. That's about, yeah. 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 It's, Dang. That show can pour its own cereal. It's learning cursive. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's, a, that's impressive. A show can learn cursive. Yeah. Yeah. I, I still don't get it. Uh, I have a question. Yeah, so it's a show about people sharing their stories about depression. Mm-hmm. Um, is there one that you found helped you or like really sticks in your mind as like something that resonated with you uh, over the course of these nine years? Oh, I mean, definitely. I mean, it's hard to 
think of specific examples because we've been going monthly for Mm -hmm. nine years. But like just hearing someone tell their story in their own way. We've had people uh, do interesting like structures with, with stories, like sharing them as like a children's story, like once upon a time. You know, people do songs, mm-hmm. people do poems. I've actually debuted new music as part of our show. Last year, uh, a friend and I did actually a dance piece uh, as part of, uh, I, I told a story about my mental health through dance, which of all the uh, performing art mediums I've grown up in, dance ain't one of them. So I, like, I had this idea since before the pandemic started. I was like, I want to do this like dance piece about my mental health where it's like a partner dance and like she plays my depression. So I got a brilliant friend, Nicole Pascaretta, to help me choreograph it. And over like two months, we put a dance together and it was real cool. But like the chance to like try something new, you know, uh, I just want to hit all like the artistic endeavors at some point. Um, but yeah, like just literally because we uh, our show generally has three essayists per show. Mm-hmm. So times that by monthly, give or take uh, times that by nine years. But literally like hundreds of people have shared their story. And like the first show I ever did with the group, I shared a story about mine. No dancing in that one. Um, but it was just super cathartic to get my stuff out in front of an audience that loved me immediately and to see that inspire comedy. Um, and never like in a, like we're never like dunking on anybody, you know, uh, we're just like, we're genuine taking a turn of phrase, taking like a mannerism, um, and just like exploring that a little bit. It just feels super cathartic as a, as an essayist myself to like have that, uh, have that just explored by comedians and watch them like go to work. It's super cool. Yeah. And to be, to have your story like taken care of, I feel like, and and for people to just like rally around your story and embrace it and be tender with it as opposed to what you said because yeah it's very rare in this world I hear America runs on Duncan no yeah <laughs> I America really... runs on Duncan on each other that's how we do it man yeah it's yeah. a it's a dog eat dog eat world I gotta listen if we're gonna if we're gonna be on this basketball team I gotta dunk on your ass yeah I'm gonna step on all of your heads to get points I mean. Y'all can try. I mean, you can try, but I'm I'm pretty nice with with the D fence. Uh, Needed to make that clear, which D I was referring to. Listen, I'm nice with all the D's, and there's a I'm so nice with my D. There's a fence around my D. How about that? All right, there's a that, fence around my D. Uh huh. Watch out, basketball. My D is so good it fenestrates. It goes through small objects like a ball going through a hoop. Thank you so much for explaining that word to me. Yeah, defenestrate. Yeah, uh, well, well defenestrate s- actually means to throw something out a window. But what? Yeah, I, I do. F- I know words. Yeah, and once those uh, once those seniors uh, give up the basketball court, I'm taking y'all to school. Oh, once those seniors they they said they were gonna play two games. It's been eight games, they, but they're gonna get tired soon. And then they, wait till I dunk on. They've y'all. been hustling. To be fair, like they got their walkers out. Mm-hmm. Uh, they took they they that guy took the the little tennis balls off his walkers. He placed them with basketballs, you know, mm-hmm. just to get extra height. Um, I'm they are surprisingly accurate with their granny style shots. Yes. When they surprisingly started, accurate. When they started, they were actually seniors in high school. Yeah. Now they're elderly people. That's how long we've been waiting. Ironically, they are seventy sixers, like at least seventy six years old. Uh, yeah, give or take. absolutely, yeah. Yeah. absolutely. But once they're off the field, once I gotta, I pay them the respect. Yeah, they, respect the elders. Absolutely, they're the elders. They run the court. But once they're done, guys, watch out! You're gonna be, you're gonna be kissing my knees. Yeah, when yeah, I'm yeah, dunking. Yeah. Once they're done, I'm gonna be throwing hot coffee in all your faces. Once Whoa! The, once the old school's over, new school's in session. New school's in session, and um, they're making it rain threes. The second they get off the court, you guys are going to be having some old-fashioned cake donuts. The second they get off the court, we're reliving the scene from Along Came Polly. I'm going to Philip Seymour Hoffman all over you guys. Whoa. Wow. Whoa. Deep cut. Yeah. Shout out to Philip Philip Phil Seymour Hoff. Well, I'm, I'm going to pour out some Gatorade now for Philip Seymour Hoffman. We're all going to pour out some Gatorade. Pour out some Gatorade. Yeah, yeah. R.I.P. R.I.P. to the goat. I'm a vitamin water guy. That's pretty. That's pretty good. The sugar yeah. free. Yes, yes. See, yeah, that's <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> they don't get no promo here. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, I um, I I feel like, I, well, first of all, it's a shame because the first time I think I'd heard about that show was BS told me he was doing it like a couple yeah. months ago, and this is a show that's been on for years, and I, I can't believe I didn't I didn't know about it, and um, yeah, that's a beautiful thing you offer. I feel like. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like that's a that's a that's a banner and a flag that you wave. I feel like you're 
in the community. I feel like I know you as like the mental health guy That's advocate. Really cool. really yeah, cool we'll just say I do try to. Uh, proclaim myself and then live up to the title of mental health advocate um i know this show was something i would have loved to have seen you know, when i was a younger sad kid in like high school and college going through it uh just to know that like mm-hmm. hokey as our title is you're not alone is true you know sometimes i think when you're i know for me when i'm in it i feel like oh no one's ever been in this no one knows you know, how can anyone relate to this i'm so down and i'm so insecure uh, so like uh, internally minded i'm like oh i'm the saddest anyone's ever been ever it's like very solipsistic another another big word for you guys it's a big word source here yeah yeah yeah. that's uh what does that mean that means you can only you only can relate to your own internal yeah solipsism means that you're like so lost in your own world that you can't see anybody else Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. where'd you guys go uh uh you know um (laughs) the uh i remember when i was first starting improv I was in my early 20s and I was really struggling with my mental health too and my depression and Mm -hmm. I remember seeing a lot of shows like this and just wondering like how are people so brave to talk about this because I was so ashamed of what I was going through and Mm -hmm. too proud to admit that I was struggling Uh, but I I really I think needed to hear the stories of people like that in different shows of that nature Um, you know I think one of the things that I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing, but it, it ended up helping me a lot is I remember when I first got into the comedy world, you know, comedy kind of attracts people that are going through struggles and, yeah. you know, it's the island of misfit toys and uh, everybody kind of uses the catharsis of comedy to like kind of help them explain what they're going through. And I remember just meeting a ton of people and you would see kind of two divides of people, the people that were struggling and they did the work and they got help and they, they got better. Uh, and like you saw them thrive and then you saw the people that were not doing the work were not getting help yeah. and st- still continuing to struggle and relive the same patterns and do all the things and I just remember being like I can't be one of those people yeah. I have to be one of the people that's working on the stuff so shows like what you were doing were you know super impactful thank you yeah. I, having like grown up in the arts like I was an actor first I've been doing theater uh, damn near my whole life uh, I toiled in the community theater mines for 10 years and it's a beautiful thing I made some of the best friends in the world and perform mm-hmm. great work and saw great work. But like I, there was a couple of sh- uh, performances and a couple of shows where I caught myself using my art as my therapy. And I was like, Oh no, we don't, that's, that's bad. We don't, you don't do that. You don't, your, your cat, your, your friends are there to work. Uh, and, you know, it, it's not, it doesn't help your art. It doesn't uh, help the other folks get their stuff together. It's therapeutic. It's cathartic, but it, it's not therapy. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. Wow, yeah, that's a very sharp distinction. What took a while? What, yeah, what helped you to really delineate that? What helped you to really sharpen and to see clearly for yourself the pitfalls of mistaking one for the other? Yeah, you know, it, it's it's uh, definitely it's a self reflection. It's actually starting real therapy. Uh, it's uh, checking in with friends and like just recognizing like uh, the person I want to be and the person I'm like oh I don't I don't like how I acted that day. You know, I you know I. Came to, I come to the arts generally uh, for escape, and then I was like, "Ooh, when you when you do that stuff, it like brings all the stuff like back, you know? Like, what are you, what are you doing here? Like, what are, what are, you know, what, what are we setting out to do?" Uh, it's it's it took a while. I'm, I'm very glad that like I, you know, my, my whole thing has been like the arts have been so welcoming to me and all my quirks all these years that I try to do that for other people. If I can make anybody feel as welcome, starting comedy or starting theater as I, like I did when folks took me in, you know, that, that, I feel like that's 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 ball game yeah i can definitely empathize with that i remember i think for a long time i was using improv or the art that i was doing um as like a, essentially like a form of self-annihilation like i birthday. go ahead i'm listening it's oh, my yeah. birthday on the screen <laughs> okay. it always happens go ahead self-annihilation <laughs> uh in a sense like I, I remember one of the best uh pieces of like improv advice i got early on was like oh you don't have to be yourself in an yeah. improv scene and i was like oh my god I finally have freedom from myself, which is what I wanted, you know? Yeah. Uh, wow. And I think over time, it took me a long time to realize, like, no, that's wrong. That's not what I should be chasing on stage. Yeah. Mm. But, I mean, so this is a... Uh, I was not pretty resolutely... I could be melancholy if I, like, had a crush on a girl, which mm. happened a lot, but... <laughs> Haven't we all? Yeah. 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 But otherwise, I could not say that I was a sad kid really at all. Do you, uh, Jake, do you identify as, like, were you a sad kid? Oh, yeah, 100%. Talk, talk b- both of you, I want to hear, about, I want to learn about this experience. What is this world? What is this life like? I feel like a lot of this was happening around me, and I was ignorant to it. I wonder if even my own sisters can relate to this, because I, d- I don't, I can't say that I 
that I did, I feel like, yeah, I didn't, I didn't have that experience. What, what, what could you paint like a, a simple picture of it for me? What was that like? Um, hmm. I mean, everyone's uh, baggage and everyone's stuff is different. Uh, you know, I, I always say that I was very, I wasn't one of those, oh, uh, how do I put it? How do I used to put it? Uh, I would never think like, oh, even when like the news and stuff was bad, like, oh, it wasn't, I never thought like, oh, the world is bad. But, you know, I obviously know the world is bad because I read the news, but never like, oh, this world is so bad. I don't want to be here. But it was always like, I'm what's bad with it. Wow. <laughs> Take yourself out the equation. And, you know, people's lives be better. But like, that's yeah, vastly overestimating my importance, I, I think. Yeah, I think it's often like you blame yourself for things that are out of your control. Yeah. And um, I think that ends up turning into shame and all guilt and remorse and, uh, you know, I, I was reading The Body Keeps the Score, which is a book about, like, you know, healing from trauma. And mm -hmm. uh, I think there was a great saying in there, which is like, um, you know, everybody goes through stuff and the, the people that talk about it, you know, they get help. And the people that are quiet, they slowly watch their life fall away. And I think that's mm -hmm. probably the way it works. Yeah. Ooh, I love that. Yeah. I've heard of that a book. I got I do have to check it out. Yeah, I hear about it's a that great book it's a great read. Um I work in the mental health field, so I'm mm -hmm. I'm a researcher and so I read a lot of stuff that is very clinical and scientific and you know erudite. Uh that's why you know all the big words. Yeah. Uh and I think Dr. Vander calls does a great job of distilling his uh work and his clinical experience in a way that is much more story and anecdote driven. Um and he avoids a lot of the heady clinical erudite scientific technical, technical parts jargon. of it yeah, yeah so you know it's easily digestible by everybody and it's it's written in a you know more story like way so it's uh i think it's a really good yeah. read yeah because i think we, we as human beings like we we are we crave story i think that's just fundamentally in us that's how we relate to each other uh through like story and storytelling i mean that's the oldest traditions from greek theater to griot tradition uh just how much that's a part of us no matter where you grew up or where your culture is it's like that's so fundamental. So that that that's yeah. I gotta check this book out. Yeah, hey, uh, all right, Timmy, Aaron, got Salisbury steak for you yeah, on this delicious. Wednesday in the lunch line. Thank you. I also Thank got you. a story for you. Oh, oh, hold on. Let me let me pull up a let me pull up a multicolored stool here. You kids yeah. pull up a multicolored stool. And I want you to help me. I want you to take part in the story. A minute. There's a story about a knight. He had a red suit of armor. It's all red. And he wore red Adidas with his suit of armor. His name was uh, his name is uh, what did, it, did I give you guys names already? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I give you guys new names. Rory, your name's Rory. You're you're an, you're a knight with a red suit of armor. Oh, I love that. And one day, Rory met a big old dragon Oof. named Jimbo. I'll be Jimbo. All right. I'll be Jimbo. <laughs> yeah. Fine, That's fine. You guys want collard, collard greens? Or yeah, no? of course Absolutely. we want yeah, collard yeah, greens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and uh, Rory one day met this dragon and said, said uh, describe to the dragon how he's going to slay him, vanquish him. Dragon, your days are numbered. The townspeople need you to go. And I uh, hope you didn't have uh, an attachment to those wings because we're going to be putting them on the uh, draping them across the school. Oh, wait, did you say attachment? Look, I'm gonna avoid an attacher. I can't. I'm. I'm gonna have to. Little did Rory know this dragon was dealing with m many mental health issues. Look, I. I gotta. I gotta avoid this situation. I. I deal. I'm bad with conflict. My boundaries are poor, and I think I just. I think I should leave. I think. I think you guys are right. Wait, dragon, you're. You're, you're sweating profusely. I. I'm bad with conflict. I just. I don't. Well, I'm. I'm already taking up too much wait, space. Hold on. I need to. Dragon, let me. I'm gonna. I'm gonna put my lance down Thank on you. the table gently. Okay. So I'm showing sure you no harm. Yeah. yeah. No foul. Rory said I'm not gonna hurt you. Down. You know, you don't have to go through it by yourself. You know, you can. You know, if you just look, I'm just gonna self sabotage my way out of here, and uh, I think I think that might be best for everybody. Problem is, when you self sabotage, you do so with fire from your mouth. We've lost two hospitals. Already. Oh my god. In the distance. I'm a monster. Ash. I'm a monster. No, no, no. You're not a monster. You you've done some monstrous things, but that's that's seems largely out of your control. Why don't you take take a seat on these uh these, on my uh, pile that, of gold yeah, on, on my hoard on my let treasure me, hoard? Let me just push move these uh, gold coins to the shape of a couch uh, okay. for you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 
Now, if you don't mind, I'm, I'm gonna sit on this big old ruby. Yeah, that's I'm gonna great. Sit, I'm gonna sit in this ruby here, and let me just let me just. When, when do you think this all started? Oh my God, no one's ever asked me that. And before. This is the story of how Rory the Knight began his career as a clinical psychologist. Yeah, I, I just um, it all started when I hatched out of an egg, and I was told that I need to I need to hoard treasure. Uh, that the, the my worth is based off of the treasure I get. And that uh, you know, I need to, I need to go. I need to terrorize a city. I need to, I need to take it over. I need to subjugate everybody. And I, that's just not who I'm supposed to be. You I don't were, think you were the uh, youngest of your litter. Yeah, yeah, I was. How did you know? How did you know? Classic little guy syndrome. Yeah. It falls humans and dragon alike. Yeah, my brothers and sisters are so good at it. They're, my mom would be like, "Why can't you be like the silver dragon? Why can't you be like the crimson dragon? Why can't Has you be like anyone ever told you?" You're enough. What? You're enough. What? No, As you and are. Suddenly, Jimbo the dragon disappeared into a glittering sparkle, and what emerged was just a young, young fella named Jimbo. Oh my was god! Not a dragon at all. Oh my god! Just a sixteen-year-old in a tank top. The curse has been lifted, and your abs are incredible. <laughs> Scene. Scene. <laughs> Objectify a child. Uh, <laughs> hold on, hold on. Hey, you could, you could have incredible abs in a way that's not objectifying. Your, yeah, yeah. Be a model. You yeah, be a model that, now, could, that could be a very validating statement. Yeah. yeah. Lift them up. Lift them up. Doing <laughs> crunches. Doing pull-ups. Um, beautiful. Uh, yeah. I I feel uh. Oh, and this is the other thing I want to talk about. So you have also have this background in um in uh. Stage combat? Yeah. Yes, thank you. Yeah, uh, I grew up doing theater. and uh, Let's first just yeah. talk about your... I want to start there with like the just the theater. Because mm -hmm. that is a... Uh, it's an interesting part of theater and the theater community mm -hmm. that it just becomes this like welcoming world for people who feel quirky or feel left of center or who feel who feel don't feel like they quite fit in yeah. or it becomes that's one of the things it becomes it doesn't it's not just filled with those people but it becomes a haven for for that kind of people especially yeah. in like middle school high school i i noticed that and because of that like the theater world is such a interesting world because it's actually with all these different types it's actually funny is uh i like for a couple of my friends who i've met doing comedy um I most recently told this to my friend Nicole, who I mentioned we worked on a dance piece together. She was not a theater person, but I was like, I mean this as a compliment. From anybody else, it's an insult. You exude big theater kid energy. Mm -hmm. For me, that's a compliment because that, that those are my people. That's my my tribe. Uh, but anybody else, it's like that's derogatory. But uh, a classic theater kid. Um, what is it? In third grade, our teacher told us that like a really popular uh, 1990s cartoon voiceover artist grew up in our town. Mm -hmm. And like, I don't want to say his name here. It feels weird. But like, it was classic 90s voiceover artist. And I was like, what? I was like, he went to this school? Then I could do that. And then like, I mentioned to my parents like, oh, yeah, we went to high school with him. I was like, you never mentioned this to me. So then I was like, I'm going to. That was the first thing I like seriously wanted to be was a voiceover artist for cartoons. I love cartoons as a kid. And then like when I got to junior high, I was like, I should probably try acting for real if I eventually want to do a voiceover thing. And then I just wow. fell in love with acting for real because especially theater acting. Because you get the one-on-one, -on -one. you get you know mm -hmm. most voiceover acting unless you have a really cool ass director like like an Andrew Romano or something. It's like you go in the booth, you say the line eight times. Someone in editing matches it up with a scene partner who's not even there with one of their eight takes, and they just sound, they just kind of mash up which ones sound together. You don't really record them in, in person, you know, unless it's a really rare special project and scheduling works. Uh, but you just for time and money purposes, they you just you just have your day or days to do it. So I was like, eh, that's mm -hmm. not that's not fun. That's not fun for me. Um, and then, yeah, I started doing plays in high school. And um, it and sounds like you're really seeking like connection. Yeah. Yeah. You know what it is? It's classic middle child. Mm -hmm. <laughs> classic yeah. middle child. Oh. You know, I, like, yeah. I was uh, my older sister, sister, younger brother, both very outgoing in a non theater context. I am not that guy. Like my thing on school trips and vacations was as a kid was being so quiet that eventually I just wandered off silently. And everyone had to look for me. I wasn't like I wasn't the kid to act out. Even as a baby, my mom was like, "You weren't the baby that stayed, like cried all night, but you would just be awake." Be like, "What are we gonna do about this?" Uh, so she would have to like 
we watched Johnny Carson together. Like, you know, uh, just try to get me just to go to sleep. I wasn't like, you know, crying all night, but just, mm -hmm. okay, I'm up. What are you doing? Uh, so even as a kid, like, you know, there's stories of me like at school trips, like just peacing out. Uh, Cause I would like stay and look at this thing in the museum or one time in, Florida when I was a baby my grandpa left a hotel door room open and I crawled out and by the time they're like where's Michael and then like the whole hotel had to look for me and this one old lady found me it was it was nuts so I think theater yeah it's finding that my spot there it was originally like originally tried to get into acting and then you know just finding the community of you know like you said like there's theater kids like theater kid energy and stuff like that the outgoing ones but then also like the kids who like did stage crew so not that like usually the more quiet kids mm -hmm. which is just like built into patent stuff but like i vibe with them like they when you, when everyone's when everyone's working together like to make a show happen you know it's, it's it's the coolest thing like i joke but like i don't trust any group of more than like 30 people who are all united in one purpose if they're not putting on a musical <laughs> like political parties i <laughs> yeah. don't know well yeah. uh, you know uh, everything else seems cult like to me but if you put on a musical i understand completely uh where we're going with this uh and musicians you know once you get into Musicals and the musicians, they're a different type of cat, you know, mm -hmm. vibing with them. You know, I've in my life, I've done just about everything uh, you can do in a show. I have worked at stage crew as a techie uh, at a, um, a regional dinner theater uh, for a couple of years. Uh -huh. um, I have played like, kind of accidentally by way of circumstance being in a musical and needing a free person. Like I have played instruments and in shows. Uh, and, like the only thing I haven't done is like I haven't stitched a costume. I can't sew. Uh, so like just about everything else. Like at some point, I have done you know played instruments, hung lights, uh, painted sets. Uh, hey, sets. hey, Jimmy, uh, you yeah. have a, you have a wealth of theater experience, and uh, hey, yeah, yeah. Um, w we need you to put a secret trap door on the stage. Oh, wonderful! Just uh, hide it somewhere. Don't tell anybody where it is, and uh, we just need we need to do that. But uh, keep it on the down low. Is this related to the production? Of the whiz, or unbeknownst to the cast. Look, it's a, uh, it's for a prank. It's oh. for um. I'm secretly, I'm secretly turning our production of the whiz into jackass. Oh, that's ever devious, sir. Yeah, that's why you are the theater teacher, and I am but the student. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna set up the the theater to and the stage and a lot of the props to just. Hit people in the nuts. Hit people in the nuts. I want it to be a surprise. I want it to be spontaneous. I want it to be effervescent. Cut so, to three days later. All right. Here comes. I'm playing the whiz. It comes. It comes, Joel. Y'all watch out. I'm about oh, we're to watching march, Joel. About to march through. So y'all just make sure the lights on me. Yep. Uh, you know, what I mean, I got to. I had to. I had to cut out a football practice for this. So I'm just gonna come on. Do my little thing, and so uh, you wanted to meet the wizard. A, a absolutely wonderful song. Th it, it, you know, it's just it's just the the hot big song, and so it makes sense. <laughs> ah, my leg. Ah, well met, well met indeed. This yes. is hilarious. That's real passion, real art. Look, my outlook on theater changed when I saw Johnny Knoxville for the first time. Yes, I've got, I must say, since you acquired tenure and watched the Jackass trilogy of movies, uh, your uh, zest for life has been incredible. I, I, I don't, there's never been a greater piece of theatrical art. I've never seen a crew of individuals more unified in one purpose. I'm starting to smell my own blood. Mr. Johansson, why not give yourself a new theatrical endeavor? Why don't you put the Jackass films to life? On the stage. Ah, ah! My knee is really bent in a weird way. <laughs> I never thought of that. We need to build a half pipe on this stage. Somebody get me some skateboards. Oh, yes. Wonderful. I need a giant hand. Cut to three days later. All right, guys. That was a funny prank last time. but uh, hey, yeah. Is your uh, leg doing okay now? My leg's doing fine. It's good enough for it was, us uh, to try. It was rather floppy or floppy uh, when you got caught in that trap door. Uh, listen, guys. That was a fluke. It was a funny prank, but... Now we're doing this bit where the where the uh, where the wizard uh, skates on the half pipe while he sings the song. So you guys just watch out. Somebody hold my crutch. I'm gonna go ahead. You and can do this. You can. We believe in you. You're the star for of this show for a reason. All right. All right. I'm gonna drop in. You guys watch out. Oh no! Is that an alligator at the other end? <laughs> ah! <laughs> See, See, welcome to Jackass. <laughs>
Is that, is that a role that you ever played in a theater production? I have done two productions of The Wiz. One, <laughs> one in high school, I was a, I was a brick uh, in the ensemble. It was like a four-part harmony singing uh, Ease On Down, Ease On Down the Road. And then uh, also ensemble for like a charity gala. We had a couple like Broadway stars come in as a fundraiser. Mm-hmm. One, of our, one of the theaters upstate I work with. Uh, a lot of, I love, I love that show. Uh, <laughs> I can never like really be in it, but like I would, I'll see it. It's coming back to Broadway. I can't wait to see it. Oh, is it? Yeah. I don't know who's in it yet. I don't know if they've announced. So this is, I, so I became a, the, I got an acting my senior year of high school. Yeah. I went to theater school, blah, 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 right? And I teach theater now. For me, theater's always been like, of course I put up plays. I, I, and I came from a kind of a world and an ethic that's very much like, produce your own stuff, like make mm-hmm. your own stuff, which the improv world is very much about that too. But like for me, theater has always been very much just about first about acting and performing. And like I always had a disconnect a little bit from the theater, the other theater kids who were there, I think for the more healthy reasons, which is like, oh, this is fun yeah. to do with other people and I'm, I'll make friends here. That was always like very secondary mm-hmm. to me. It was I was more like trying to be fucking James Dean or something, yeah. something like that. I had that phase in right, like high school where I was like, because I heard a couple of interviews of what like other method acting actors do. I was like, I'm gonna do that. So like in high school, like if like we were playing like best friends in a show, and I felt like you weren't giving me the acting performance that I wanted, I'd be like super nice to you in the hallways. I'd like, yo, Ralph's lunch is on me today. Like I'd buy you lunch, and if the opposite of like we were playing adversaries, I'd kind of be like a jerk to you, which was both things were really just dickish of me to who am I the arbiter of what high school acting is. Uh, both were as cringe and uh, embarrassing. So wow. because the guy was like, oh, you know, I, I would be one of those like, oh, you have to address me as the character's name. You know, once I once school is done, I'm not Michael anymore. And like it was meanwhile, it's like a fucking production of Footloose or something. It's, <laughs> you know, it's like nothing yeah. like the lowest stakes imaginable. It's like high school theater. But like, you know, I, I actually... <laughs> had a high school girlfriend sort of break down like every play that I did and how my personality shifted because I would like Whoa. get too like wrapped up. In- yeah. Mm-hmm. Was, so like, what did you do when you were playing the brick? How, how method did you go really there? That was about like community and uh, <laughs> really just like sitting in the harmony. Like it was my first like because I my school would do like fall drama and spring musical. And then for the first couple of years of school, because I didn't know how to sing, uh, I would just get like do good in the fall drama and then get get uh, I don't know if I can curse here, get Jack in the uh, in the musical. And then it was actually that same high school girlfriend. Uh, one day we we're like plan- making weekend plans, and I was like, "What? Uh, I'm working Sunday, but like, you want to hang out on Saturday?" And she was like, "No, I got a voice lesson." And I was like, "Okay, if you want to stop this, you you can just tell me." And she's like, "What are you talking about?" I was like, "Voice lesson. I hear you. You can talk." And she was like, "A voice lesson is a singing lesson, you idiot." I like never knew what a singing lesson was. Wow. I was like, I knew what, like piano lessons or violin lessons were. I assumed singing was something you could do or couldn't do. Like, I saw people do, like, amazing job in the musicals. Like, oh, they just, that's a thing they can do. I'm not, like, from a musical family. So, like, that wasn't, like, something I grew like, we had. I mean, we had music in the house, like, a lot of, like, class of rock and stuff like that. But nothing, like, no mm-hmm. formal music. I felt interest. the same way about comedy. I just thought that some people had some, like, were born with some special gift or spark. And, like, mm. if you didn't have it, you couldn't be funny. But, yeah. I I very much understand that. There There is this sort of idea of, yeah, you, some people have this special thing. I mean, ta- the idea of talent yeah. and who's special and who's gifted. But I do, I am very fascinated by this idea. Uh, Mr. Feinstein, so you want me to come back 30, you want me to come back 13 minutes early from, if you want to fire me, just say so, okay? If you want to fire me from this company, don't ask me to come back early from lunch. Just go ahead and let me go. No, but I, I, Cut me loose, give me my walking papers, write me up, and we'll tell my family that I don't have a job anymore. We clearly love, that's where it's going. I, I don't know where I gave you this impression. We love your work. This place doesn't run without you. When you punch out for lunch, it is chaos. I'm talking, I expect a fire barrel to get started any minute now. Uh, You're lifting you- me up a high ways for you to drop me in a moment, okay? If you want to fire me, just do it, okay? We got, we got George here as a witness. Go ahead and fire me. I'm here to look at and watch this happen. Cannot state enough. Firing you is absolutely not on the menu. If the shareholders find out we have fired you, we are done. Then why are you doing it anyway? Again, no, I, I searched my pockets. There was no pink slips here. I don't know. I don't. Oh, look what I have here. A pink slip. Oh, no, that okay. is just, that is a wow. different, that is a different pink color paper. That is just hap- that paper that what happens. What a diversion. 
Ooh, what do I have switch. here? I have a red paper and a white paper. Let yeah, he washed them together. He washes papers together and made pink slips out of them. Pa- classic Ma- paper washing story. Mr. Feinstein, this is a very elaborate, painful way to let somebody go. You could have just you could have just called me at, called me this morning and told me not to come in because and said, go ahead and find a new job. Your career is over. I'm pretty sure been merciful. If I fired you, not only would my boss fire me, he would call my wife's job and have her fired if I fired you. Ooh, mm-hmm. what did I find here? A, a nice cardboard box for people to put their things in? Wow. We ha- I have outlawed cardboard boxes at this company specifically, so you didn't get the impression you were being fired. I have two. Could be for both of you. Listen. Are, is this some sort of double double firing? Are you quitting and then also firing me at the same time? No, this, you want to see us both go down, Mister Fine. I am not. What I'm, have I done to you? This is not a Chris Benoit situation. Uh, no one is getting fired. If I have anything to say about it, we are all just going to sit down. We're going to do our jobs. Last Christmas, I told you your, your your holiday tie was not my cup of tea. It was not to my taste. And this is the retaliation. You waited eight months. When what did I do? I removed that tie. I threw it in the fireplace because you were right. I have a picture of it. I have a picture of you at the holiday party in this tie. It's a it's a tie of the Grinch strangling a Who villain. And you know what? <laughs> you he, were right. And well, I was about to say I have had a change of heart about it. Actually, I, I can appreciate it more now. But what I want to say is this is a far way to go. I I I meant it with all due respect. Why are you going to destroy my entire family because of it? I just had a child. And look who's behind the door. His family. You, oh, it is bring your family to work day. What have we done? Family, wife, children, pack up your things and get ready to move into this cardboard box because Mr. Feinstein doesn't like my taste in holiday ties. No, I, I, I insist that, uh, not to get all Rodney Dangerfield. Take my job, please. Uh, you can have mine. I, uh, this company cannot function without you. We are in trouble. If you all right, guys, thank you for um, role playing in this Agent of Chaos workshop. Uh, I've been playing the Agent of Chaos. You guys did such a great job. Um, you know, next time there's an Agent of Chaos in our business dealings, you guys are going to know exactly what to do. It's so. all about diffusing, placating. I just want to thank you guys for this opportunity for me to participate in this and for you guys, including my actual wife and children. Yes. Hi. Mm-hmm. Did you get, did you get, you, you all get snacks? You all get your snacks? All right. We're going to go to Burger King after this Ooh. scene. <laughs> 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 uh, beautiful. Um, what, what, what else? Uh, what, oh, so we, we didn't talk about stage we combat did, yeah. yet. Um, that is, I remember there was a contingent of kids that I went to school with who were very, they were very into getting like their certifications around yeah. stage combat. I don't know what it. I don't know if it was a certain moment or if it's a kind of a a, a po- certain pocket of all theater kids go through that. But it seemed like it was pretty lucrative. It yeah, it can be. You know, if you find the right uh, areas and you invest in yourself enough. You know, I I there's a fun moment because I've taken you know I've gotten a couple certifications and taken many classes over the course of my life. But then as I start to choreograph shows and get paid for it, I was like. I think I've just about paid for all those classes. I'm like returned on my investments. It's, it's you know same thing with improv when you take enough improv classes that you get mm-hmm. coaching and teaching gigs. You're like, wait a minute, finally, you know, like we plunk all this money into it. It's nice to see it come back. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that kind of happened. Just sort of happened. Sta- uh, I was kind of in the right place at the right time. Um, I uh, got into stage combat. Uh, there's I took a couple workshops as a kid doing theater, and then when I went to community college, there was a two part stage combat class the theater department that counted as two gym credits oh, like why nice. would you take volleyball or bowling when you could take play fighting uh nice. so that got me started and then i uh through that college i took a certification course with uh richard ryan who'd done like the dark knight and vikings on the history channel and a bunch of other stuff and like worked with him for a couple weeks and got certified in hand-to-hand broadsword then then just when i started doing community theater i was doing a play and the next show up was othello and they didn't have a fight choreographer lined up and that show needs a lot there's a lot of fighting and dying and murdering and um a woman in the cast my one of my best friends in the world margaret she was on the board of the theater and she was like wait like she she saw me like play fighting with the guy backstage we're killing time on a tech sunday day she was like hold on you do yeah i do stage combat this role i was doing didn't need it so i didn't like flex that much about it so she's like gonna get you a gig so then i just got into choreographing off 
as a choreographer, doing your Othello for your first play is a lot. There's wow. a lot of stuff going on. And it was, mm-hmm. I learned a lot. I learned how to deal with actors and find my place as a, because I know uh, this is an audio medium, but for anyone who's, when, I, when a production says, hey, we're bringing in a fight choreographer, I know I couldn't be more the opposite of anybody's mental Im- image of what a fight choreographer <laughs> looks like. I'm 5'3". Uh, I got a little tummy, uh, you know. But uh, you know, then I an, an adorable reading rainbow shirt. Yeah, shout out to Bob Burton, baby. Yeah, PBS uh, butterfly in the sky. Uh, so, Is so that I know the name that of it, your fight choreography business. Butterfly have you have you ever been in a physical fight? Like, uh, like besides like junior high school like fights, which are basically junior high school fights with boys are pushing and grandstanding. Yeah, like you yes. shove a guy and then like ha, like that's no. I I did punch one friend one time. Uh, <laughs> during a show it was like tech sunday of a show and we're getting crazy stressful it wasn't going well and he gave me like a wedgie that in my memory was so bad my under drawer my drawers were wrapped around his forearm wow and like, that's how it goes in my memory obviously it couldn't be that because i'd be cartoonish but he, like, he we were in the green i rooms. think that deserves a punch <laughs> so I, yeah. like, I shoved him and then I, my brain was like you're not done hitting him yet and i clocked him in his jaw and i was like i'm so sorry he was honestly it was like a cartoon thing where like characters acting stress and stuff like that and then somebody slaps him i feel better now he was like you hit me and i just feel better now and i was like Still very sorry. Like, I still, like, I was like, you know, so I thankfully hadn't been that deep in stage combat. And so I had, didn't know how to punch very well. Mm. Uh, not that I could have done much damage to him anyway. I'm a little tiny baby. Uh, <laughs> but I like to think, good thing I hadn't like, gotten more fight. <laughs> I'm just thinking about like a kid that's just like undefeated in stage combat. Yeah. Never been knocked out. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> never well, taken j- a dive that I didn't play, <laughs> wasn't blocked for. I joke yeah. whenever I teach a class or do a show, I'm like, no fatalities. I'm good. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, the, I, I, it's such a big deal is made of of it, of like its role in keeping people safe and yeah. and in in productions. And yeah, I do I do see that and find that and how important that is that role is. And it, yeah, it's something. Sometimes I feel ashamed that there's so little I actually do know about theater. Mm-hmm. Like I, could, I don't know my way around a light a lighting board. I don't know. How to run sound. Yeah. I can move things around the stage. I can do run crew, I guess. Yeah, when instructed, I'm the same way. I'm like, oh, if you tell me where to put this light, angle it just the right way. Cool, yeah. cool. Yeah. Definitely don't ask me to hang anything. Hang any yeah. lights. No way. I, I'm i so, for as much as theater also is my life, I didn't, no. do, I didn't learn any of that, the actual practical stuff. I don't think, I don't think, I mean, because a show isn't just one person, you know, doing it. So, you know, my friends who direct shows that the, the first job is getting surrounding yourself with people who know how to hang lights, know how to design sets like that's and then you build a smart team and then uh, and you work from there. I think uh, Lin-Manuel Miranda, like said in a interview with the um, the, Har- the Harvard Crimson. I'm not going to give away my shot. He said that too, but earlier yeah, yeah. before he said that, he said that musical theater isn't an art form. It's like twelve art forms sort of like mashed together. You know, it's like to make a show and like there's so many masters of their uh of their craft who like have to like you know maybe like a sound guy isn't the best dancer but that's what you have the dancers for and then you know and then helping dancers learn how to act and then stuff like that arranging music is its own thing it's it's this is beautiful y'all there's nothing better than musicals y'all yeah man i mean it's funny because i'm not a musicals guy i also don't like musical improv but i'm (laughs) on a musical improv team Uh uh-huh i've written two musicals of that uh, the, just like straight up musicals, but I don't really care for them. It's uh, it's really funny. It's not, and I don't dislike them either. Sure. It's like it's like an animated movie. It's mm. like you gotta kind of drag me to it. But once I get there, I'm always happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, I, I don't know what what that is. What that is in me. Were you, you weren't a theater kid before improv? No, uh, the only artistic thing I've actually ever really done is improv. Cool. Uh, so yeah, the theater is lost on me. Um. But I, I just and I, it, it's taken me a long time to like get over the cognitive dissonance that improv is just theater. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Isn't that wild? It's unrehearsed. Like the, the the definition that Dell and them had was like unrehearsed theater. Yeah, just making up a play on the spot, you know, and then the plays never get done again. Yeah, that that is. I mean, it's wild how the uh, improv becomes this like uh, gateway drug into yeah. theater for a lot of people, and like. But it is also odd. It is also odd. Improv is in this weird space where improvisers don't think they're actors. Right. They don't think they're doing theater. Mm-hmm. They don't think they're comedians. Yeah. <laughs> one of one of my early improv indie teams, a girl was like, "Hey, I signed up to be an actor." And like one of the sketch, the magnet has like their sketch 
uh, program. So she like that when you finish your you, you're writing sketches, you have to like put them up. And she was like, I'm going to be acting in like a sketch show. Like, and I'm not an actor. And I was like, girl, the first time you pretended to be somebody you're not in an improv scene, you an actor now. Yeah. yeah. I was going to tell you this. Uh, you you an actor. But, yeah, that's really odd. I yeah. think it's because you don't memorize lines or something. Yeah, I feel. Like, I think that's what pe- most people think is is such a part of it. But it's like, yeah, I, I'm taking my very first acting classes right now Ooh. after doing improv for eight years. Uh. And I remember saying to the people when I first started the class, I was like, "Yeah, I'm here because I've finally gotten over my cognitive dissonance <laughs> that improv is acting." No, wow. you know, yeah. I also don't really consider myself a comedian either. I sometimes say it just because it's like a shortcut to yeah. explain what I'm doing, but it's like. Yeah, I just think of him like I'm. I'm just a guy that improvs. Like, yeah. yeah, that makes total sense to me. But it's like, uh, you could also say I'm just a guy that tells jokes. If yeah. you're a stand up, yeah. I, you know? I consider myself more of a gambler than anything else. Like, I, I often think that improv <laughs> is that. just gambling with your ego and pride on stage. Oh, I love that. Uh, you know, who knows if you're gonna bomb? It, it's kind of like that Amy Poehler statement of like, uh, good improv is watching someone jump out of a plane and build a parachute on the way down. Oh, like I'm so just good. taking the gamble on that. That's what I think about Savannah Lou. You could just call it here, man. Yeah, that's too much. That's t- I'm on. going all in. I'm going all in. No, we 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 can we can go home. We've had we've had a real good night. I think I don't I don't think you need to hit right now. Look, guys, I need you to both look at me I know. in the eyes, both of you. Yeah. Your eyes are bloodshot red. You are drunk. You are, and your wedding's tomorrow. Tomorrow, dude. I've seen the Hangover. I've seen the Hangover, and I know that we can get through this. We'll come out bonded, more bonded than we ever have been. You're wearing a suit of full of shark skin, just full shark skin suit. It's because we've won so much money, I could buy a shark skin suit, and they delivered it to me here at this table. Well, this isn't this what you wanted? You got your damn suit, got your damn suit. Uh, Savannah Lou. Let's go. Let's get out of here. We already, we already made good. You, you could lose everything on this bed. You could lose, you could lose your wife to be. You could lose. She your hates whole your wife. gambling. I know. She I'm, told us to not take you gambling for your bachelor party. She insists. She told specifically, if you do anything tonight, I don't care if you do strippers. I don't care if you do whatever you do. Cocaine. Do not take Savannah Lou gambling. Yeah. And here we are in a place called Gambling Spot. I brought so much cocaine with me. I know. You haven't touched it. Look, I know when we were walking through the casino, you guys, I was just like the quiet little kid that snuck away. Yeah. Uh, and How did you do that? I, it's just a, it's, and I found this table. I found this blackjack table. And I'm putting my pride and I'm putting my ego on the line. And it looks like you're putting your wedding ring on the table. What yep. are you doing? Savannah I, Lou, what are you doing? I, yeah, I brought my wedding ring that I'm supposed to have at the th- ceremony tomorrow here. It's just like, look, I can't, I can't not chase the thrill. You are drunk. You are, you are wearing a shark skin suit. Ricardo's got a hatchback full of cocaine and you've, you've bet your own wedding ring. How much is how much is enough? How what is the line? Which one is too much? We let let's just leave the gam. It's spelled D A. The gambling spot. The gambling. Let's leave the gambling spot right now. Yeah, wouldn't ahead. you say that marriage is the biggest gamble of all? Huh? <gasps> I didn't think of that. Are you all in on Jackie? Are you gonna take <gasps> a little weenie bet? Are you gonna are you gonna push all your chips to the t- to the table? Look, I, I didn't even think of it that way. Is it Wendy? Wendy, yeah, Jackie, Jackie, Wendy, yeah, Jackie, yeah, Jackie, Jackie Wendy. Wendy, Jack, Jackie with an I, and then That's Wendy. A weird name, guys. She's you guys are lady. you guys are giving a speech at my wedding. You guys, you guys got to know my fiance's name. It's just it's hard because sometimes I'm like, is it Jackie? Is it Wendy? It's yeah. Jackie Wendy. Jackie Wendy. I always it's get half. In, it's hyphenated. It's and, one, yeah, Jackie Wendy. Yeah. It's like Mary Kate, but Jackie Wendy. But yeah. then it's also Jack A, like the actress from Two Two Seven. Ooh, it's yeah, Jack yeah, yeah, A Wendy. Yeah. That's only when she's mad. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's not. Get her mad. Are you okay. all in or what on your wedding? You know what? You guys are right. I'm all in on my wedding. All right. But just one more hand. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> now, I forget the rules of this game. Blackjack is the 21 one? Yeah. Yeah, okay. These are Not- Uno cards. See? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, we got one. We got one in. <laughs> I don't know what that's about. Beautiful. Um. Uh. Well, I I wanna I wanna I'm gonna make sure we get some plugs in for whatever your 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 next shows are coming up. Whatever the next things you're working on are. Uh, Michael. Love that. Uh. Well, I tell people f- uh how to find you on the internet. You can find me on uh Instagram. You can find me 
Yep. Uh, <laughs> oh, actually, before we do that, let's read this all. Together. Oh, I would love to read hey, the copy. Hey, you're listening to Radio Free Brooklyn, independent listener supported radio. Uh, th- thanks for listening. Your support keeps us going. Why don't you read the second paragraph, Michael? Uh, yeah. Radio Free Brooklyn's mission is to provide free and open platform to our community and promote mid- media literacy, education, free expression, and public art. We rely primarily on donations from listeners like you. Every dollar helps us stay on the air and allows us to continue our work in the community. <laughs> We are a 501c3 nonprofit organization, so all contributions are tax deductible. Please support with a monthly pledge or a one-time donation at RadioFreeBrooklyn.org slash donate. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, I hope you actually do voice that. acting work because you have a I great should. speaking voice. Oh, yeah. I would I would listen to an audio book narrated by you or, you know, the part of any commercial where they just speak really fast about the terms yeah. and conditions. I think you could do that really Let's well. Let's see you yeah. get, try to get really or 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 a Tory in there. Or a Tory, Very okay. Yeah. If you'd like to listen to Radio Free Brooklyn when you're not in front of your computer, please download our free mobile app on for iPhone and Android, available in the App Store, iPhone, mm. or Google Play Store for Android. This is the tiniest clipboard ever. It's a very tiny not clipboard. Anyone, no one can see it, but it is a very tiny clipboard. Disproportionate to how big the paper with the copy is. Yes. This is, this is, is it, is it at all right for me to say this is the Michael Serpy of clipboards? Absolutely. I, I, I'll, I'll, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Perfect. But uh, still, still holds it all together like a clipboard. Still hold, uh, do it, having no trouble, having yeah. no trouble holding it all together. Uh, Michael, tell us about your next uh, You're Not Alone show. Well, that's right. Please. You Are Not Alone. Uh, we'll be having our nine-year anniversary show Ooh. on Sunday, October 8th at 9 p.m. October at the Magna, 8th. At the Magna Theater on 254 West 29th Street, which is, I believe, between 7th and 8th Avenue in yep. Manhattan, the big old city of dreams, concrete jungle, wet dream tomato. Uh, How do people just follow the show if they want to just? You can go to facebook.com slash Yana Comedy. You are not alone, comedy. Yana. Yana. That's our thing for sure because you are not alone. An uplifting show about depression is a very long winded title for a show. And shout out to the Magnet Theater for putting, for allowing us to do a show with depression in the title uh, mm. for nine years going. Uh, we're looking to take this on the road at some point and do other gigs at other way games. But the Magnet's always been our home. That's where we all met. Uh, and you know, our empire roots are all there. And how do people find you again? On you can find me at Bad Case of Serpies, because uh, when your last name rhymes with an STI, you just got to roll with it. Uh, <laughs> health class wasn't fun uh, as a kid. Um, so it's B A D C A S E O F S E R P E S on Instagram and X now, we say. It's, it's Twitter. Uh, it's still Twitter <laughs> and Instagram. Uh, I don't care what Elon Musk says. Yeah, yeah. Bad case of serpies. Ain't no cure for the serpies, girl. What? Uh, what uh, let's say in the in the I hope likely event that there's some sad, uh, 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 some sad young person listening to this. What, what's what's the advice that you got for them? They're they're sort of in a they're in a rough patch and not sure what 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 to do or where to turn, and they just happen to listen to this silly podcast. What's a what's a what's a positive word or or direction you got for them so sad uh person out there of any age uh you're stellar you're amazing no one could have gotten through what you've gotten through except for you in your own way uh you have so many people in your corner that you don't know about so many people who have like told you they're in your corner you don't believe them believe them because i'm in your corner i even know you and i want you to see you succeed Unless you're a bigot, uh, <laughs> which case I don't want you to see. But otherwise, you're probably not a bigot because you're cool. Or uh, go to therapy for your bigotry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Work yeah, your bigotry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah work on no, your bigotry. There's, no, there's, no, there's no shame in asking for help. There's no yeah. shame in asking, relying on the folks in your life or an outside professional. Uh, we all just want to see you succeed. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah, that's beautiful. That's a beautiful message to end on. Hey guys, this has been No Suggestion. I'm Ralph Jean Pierre. I'm Jake Joseph, and I'm Michael Serpy. Oh man, we love you and we appreciate you. And then we're, we're gonna sing uh, "Ease on Down, Ease on Down the Road." Do, 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 do. Ease, ease on, on down, down, ease on down, down the road. road. Ease Don't on down. Carry. Seriously, my my ease leg is broken down, down here in this, in this pit. Ease on down. Broke my leg. It's ease on down.